So, just set it up. And then. Okay. When you when you come back from your from your field trips, what you typically have is is all kinds of glass bottles and and sample vials, and then you need to somehow analyze it. And and the kind of microscopy we typically use in um, analysis of sea ice algal samples, but also phytoplankton samples in, in the Arctic regions or any other regions is what we call inverted microscopy. So here's your, your bottle and then you would mix it carefully and then take a, a, a defined volume out of, that, out of that bottle and that would go in here into these counting chambers. And um, the, the neat thing about these counting chambers is that you can seal off a defined volume and then they have a very thin cover slip glass part at the bottom. So then you can have a microscope that is actually looking through the bottom and you can scan the entire bottom part of this, of this um, counting chamber in that microscope. So, so that means that you have a microscope where, where the, the lenses are not coming from the top but where the lenses are all coming from the bottom to look through this bottom section and that is what we call an inverted microscope. What we see right now in the digital in, 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 in the camera, that's actually diatom cells from, from the fast Dyson barrow. And they're pretty big. Um, the advantage of, of fixing the cells is that, that basically you have stopped any algal growth and the numbers that you will count with these kind of samples are an accurate reflection of, of what you had seen in the environment. So the cells are dead, they don't move anymore, they also lose their color. So in, in, in real life these cells would be would be dark brown because of the pigment contents. Um, these samples here have been stored for a while, so, so while they have been stored, um, quite a lot of, of degradation is still occurring and, and you can see a big difference compared to freshly fixed samples or to, to live material. So here you see, you see a different kind of, of diatom species and, and you can see that, that it looks distinctly different to the other two species that we have seen before and um, so a taxonomist would look at the size of the cell so this cell is about uh, 80 micrometers long um, they would measure the length they would measure the width they would look at the details of the frustule how many pores there are in the center how many pores there are to the sides and um, based on that they would lose use a taxonomic key and uh, identify the species. So one, but the nice thing about live microscopy is, is um, that you can see actually the color and the movement of the cells. So what we just saw here are green algae that are occurring in, in, in sea ice and you can nicely see the green color of the chloroplasts in this recording and you just saw one swimming through so they are very fast there and, and even at temperatures of zero degrees they swim at rates of, of several body lengths a second. So here we have an intact diatom cell and you can nicely see the chloroplast, this, these brown bands that you have within the, uh, within the algae and you can actually also see how that cell is moving. Many of these diatoms they have what, what is called a raphic or raphi where they have like a, like a band of slime moving along the surface of the cell and that's like a caterpillar moving over the substrate so they can glide on the, on the surface of our microscope slide but they do the same within the sea ice so they can actually move within the sea ice and position themselves really nicely according to uh, light availability or a uh, temperature and salinity profile. So you see slowly the cell is disappearing here. It's really neat to see. And it's so amazing that, that these organisms are, are so active at temperatures which we normally consider as, as pretty hostile. But uh, actually our temperatures that, that we like are pretty hostile for them. So it's all a matter of perspective. So here we have a euglenophyte. So this is a, an interesting group. Let me find it again for you here. These are, is an algal group where many of the members that belong to that group are actually uh, heterotrophic. So you see the cell doesn't contain any chloroplasts. So it's actually feeding mainly on diatoms and on, on bacteria within the sea ice. And the way it's doing it, it's gliding over the surface in this, right now here in the, in the, in the microscope slide. And, and every now and then you can see that it's ingesting an entire diatom cell or a flagellate into the cell interior. And it has two long flagella and um, 
with ease it's it's moving forward and and so looking for prey we know very very little about these flagellated species so there's probably enough work for another generation of, of um, ecologists that just to look at, at these tiny life forms within the ice okay what we again this is a different sample we are looking at about 400 times magnification and um, so this is one of the, the bigger unicellular organisms we find within sea ice. It's called a ciliate. So you see all the cilia that are that are moving at, at parts of the body. And actually the structure of the cilia, how they are oriented, how many they have, at which part of the cell you find them, are very important taxonomic uh, clues that will help you identify these, these species. And some of these, these uh, ciliates are probably also endemic to sea ice, so they, they might occur only within the ice system. And what we have now in the upper left corner of this of this field of view is actually something that is hardly ever studied in, in neither uh, the Arctic pelagic rearm or in the sea ice rearm. These are moeba. These are uh, unicellular animals that can shift their shapes. They um, can extrude part of their uh, body plasma to ingest, for example, diatom cells. So only when, by looking at these, these few examples, you get already an idea that the, the diversity of life within sea ice is actually pretty high, and there are all kinds of trophic interactions occurring where we have currently a, a very limited understanding on, on how, that, how that happens. One of the big challenges now with the, with the changes of the sea ice is to to figure out what kind of, of current status of the ecosystem we have, what kind of species do occur in the sea ice, and, and then follow up on that maybe in 10, 15, 20 years when the sea ice regime probably has changed dramatically to see whether that also meant that we have a completely different set of species and different set of interactions and, and, and ecosystem functioning happening. So, and, and that gives you a completely different impression of, of what's happening within the sea ice if you look at life samples.